Hello. What I'm showing you here are two drawings. The first one is the very first division of space that I make within the parameters of my preparatory drawing for my paint sketch. I'm showing where I want the bottom of the table to land within the space. I'm showing the approximate place where the top of the flowers will be. And I'm showing the division of the space across the horizontal where the top of the table will be. And also a vertical to show some information about the wall behind my subject. The pencils that I've used for the sketch are very soft and very dark. I like dark, soft graphite because I'm able to um, push the darks, pull the lights, use my eraser, something like this, to go back in and remove areas that might have gotten too dark, remove areas where I really want to accentuate the light and the dark connected, and where I might have lost some lights that are necessary for the structure. All right, so what I've done now is I made a pencil sketch so that I would be very clear about where I'm going. And I also have set out my palette. This is CAD yellow, cadmium yellow medium. This is a crimson, which is a blue side of red. It's equivalent to alizarin crimson, but I think it's called quinacridone crimson. This is ultramarine and raw umber, which will help me make a very, very dark. And what I'd like to do is just start moving around. I've got water here and paper towel. And what I'm going to do is ultimately try to find the same darks as I found in this sketch. I'm gonna start with my midtones. And I know that value is way more important than the color. So I'm just gonna start, and I have my photograph up here that I'm looking at.
gonna start, I'm just gonna find the massive shape to start of the flowers right there. There, I'm just gonna lift this up and take a look. Okay, it's coming along. Let me change brushes here. Um, so I'm changing to a flat. Um, I like this brush. Side of the table, and then I can still capture some of the light, the uh, lines that I made, so I know where I'm going. Uh, but it doesn't matter if I follow the lines. I'm going to be capturing what I want to capture, which is the light and the dark. And I have the structure because I drew it, so I'm going mostly with with what I had originally drawn. I'm trying to keep this to a minimum in terms of time. Um, which is what I do if I do this kind of drawing preliminarily before a painting anyway. I try to keep it to a minimum. I'm just trying to learn where are my darks, where do the darks connect. Here's a good place where dark shadow of this part of the table is connecting with dark shadow of this side of the um, base. And this one's round here. Here's edge there. And there are two parts of the table where there's some structural braces. It's actually a table that looks like a harp. Now I consider that most of the background here and I don't love to call it a background because this color right here, the darkness of this color, for example, is as important to creating this feeling of light as um, anything that's in the foreground. Um, because the darks help to create the lights and the lights help to create the darks. And sometimes the images in the background, what we tend to call the background, are as important for the whole structure of the drawing as anything else. Um, so I'm considering that this area is really just, has just been touched preliminarily right now. I'm gonna go back in with some more um, color into this area here. And I also might go back in with, see, and I'm moving, not, I'm not trying to stay exactly adhering into any specific outlines that I created with my pencil. Really just moving around. I want some interesting brush marks. Looking back at the photo to try to see. Oh yeah, this is really dark, but it gets kind of greener. This is part of the wall and this part of the wall gets greener. And uh, be working in oil, acrylic, watercolor, I'd be doing the same thing. I have to make sure that bringing some of this other dark behind the table here because that area there is just a continuation of the wall in the background. So I want to make sure that I'm not making it look like it's a separate object. It's all part of that. And losing an edge in there. See that? I'm just going right over the edge of the table there. Doesn't matter. What matters is this light, is this light, and where I have placed this in the page. I'm going to rinse off a little bit. Notice I keep going back and forth, getting new colors without rinsing my brush. I do that often. I just stay with the same brush for a long time. 
And now I'm going back in, I'm just gonna show you how I make some of these flowers with very few brush mark, very few brush marks, just to really accentuate where some of those highlights are. This whole area. So one shape is standing in for 30 blossoms. Well, maybe 12 blossoms. Okay. There's a few little areas of light that are coming down there. I'll just put those in. When I want to go back and understand the structure, for example, I want to understand the structure of this vase better. What I'll do is sometimes go back in and redraw. So if this goes like this, and then the stem goes like this, and then I can see the bottom there, just so I know where I'm going. And I'm gonna go in with something much lighter. Watch what happens here. Go in with something much, much lighter. And all of a sudden, the vase will start to come to life within the darkness here. There's that. Go back in. I like to change up the color every time I go back to my palette. Right there. And then it almost looks a little bit blue as it sits on the table. And then there's a beautiful little strip of dark, just a little shadow right there with some of the light peering out from underneath it. I want to show you something that I do sometimes at the end of a sketch, even though I'm not at the end yet. Right here, I'm going to bring this here. Right here, there's a strip of light at the back of the table. Sometimes to accentuate very thin strips of light, I see one here, I see one here, and I see this here and here. What I'll do is I will take the edge of my knife and I just go into my pile of paint, just like that. And watch what happens when I just touch it to the table there. Just touch it. I can really say something about the light. And then this one, which is, gets a little redder or pinker, down here, right at the edge down here, there. And then in here, this might be a little hard because I'm working with a straight palette knife, but I'll try just to make a little bit of light right there. Just the smallest, Oops, try it again. There, there, just a little tidge, a little tidge of light. There's another little tidge of light right here. And there's a light part of the wood, so I'm mixing up sort of a warm right in here. It's nice, warm, warm, warm wood. And then I can go back in with something very dark and edge that again. So, I'm not gonna worry too much about this parquet floor. I don't think it's that important, but it is important to me that the light, it's very important to me that the light gets accentuated there. It's not that important exactly what color I make that light, but I would like to make it feel somewhat like a wooden floor. So I'm doing that. And then just a little bit about the structure of where, where we're looking at this, the edge of a wall there. Is more warmth of a floor down here. Remember, I'm making a sketch, not a painting. A sketch, a paint sketch. So 
There's darkness there. Darkness there. Dark here. I keep looking back at my photo. I'm trying not to make things up. I am remaining faithful to something that I'm actually seeing. And there's some beautiful little areas of dark in between some of the flowers at the bottom. The more, this is what I'm talking about. If I make this area dark, this will become lighter. So if some area needs to be accentuated, don't worry about accentuating it. Work with what's next to it. I'm gonna work with what's next to the vase and the vase becomes more realized. I'm working next to the blossom and the blossom gets more realized. And then I can extend some of that darkness. And I think that's all I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna take my tape off. The kind of paper I used, hopefully it's not going to rip. You have to be really careful. And sometimes you have to put this tape on your jeans or your dirty apron and get it the, ad the adhesion off. And there we go. So thank you for joining me in the studio today, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.